But now, as the UK economy navigates high interest rates, high energy costs, and the desolation of the high street, is it even possible to start and run a successful business here in this country at the moment? My next guest, former Dragon's Den star and business giant Theo Pafitas, is here to offer some insight. The self-proclaimed shopkeeper, humble as he is, has around 300 stores and employs more than 4,000 people with his self-named retail group encompassing well-known high street names like Ryman, Stationery, of course, Robert Dias and Boo Avenue. However, despite his personal business success, recently he has criticised the government as being made up of useless politicians who do nothing, saying the retail sector has been let down. So what would he like to see the government or opposition do to mark themselves out as the party that backs business? Here to discuss all of that and much more, as I've promised him, the former dragon and business owner Theo Pafitas in the studio. Good to see you, Theo. Pleasure to be here. Thank That's you. what happens when you make an unguarded comment to a journalist. I mean, the article was great. It's yeah. exactly what I said. But, um, I mean, they have been a little bit useless recently, haven't they? I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. Who would argue with that? A touch. Uh, uh, quite a few of the viewers, and any, if the polling is to go by, quite a few... Look, we're talking about an article that ran in the Evening Standard, yes. London's newspaper last night, with the headline, you saying that the government are absolutely useless. Well, politicians are useless, broadly. And you say it was a throwaway comment, yes. but, of course, it made the headline yes. for this. Talk to us about why you think they're letting business down. I mean, if, we, if we just move politicians, just talk about the ruling party. The Go Conservative on. Party. Go yeah? on. Because, and I don't want to get party political because I'm apolitical, mm -hmm. right? So it's very simple. But they're the ones that have got the power. Yes, we'll see what Labour Party can do if they get, if they get elected mm. and um, what they deliver. But at the moment, they're not in power. Mm. The Conservatives have been in power for a very, very long time. Much of the population hasn't seen anything else other than a Conservative government. Mm -hmm. So there's no point them having a go at Labour Party. Let's talk about what they've done. Since they were elected, with a landslide win when Boris Johnson fought the loony left, I think it was his words he was mm -hmm. using at the time, um, and actually smashed Jeremy Corbyn, took power with a huge majority. But what have they achieved since? And we've had several prime ministers, three prime ministers. Yeah, have you been keeping track? I mean... If you challenge them on this, you do get the routine response, look, we had to deal with COVID, we had to deal with uh, various wars, that has pushed up energy prices. I'm not speaking on behalf of the Conservative Party, I'm speaking on behalf of a journalist who's interviewed many of them before, and they say, you know, no other party would have succeeded, but they are traditionally the party of business, the, the, the safe pair of hands in the room regarding the economy. And you're saying that they just haven't delivered for business. Well, they haven't delivered for business. They've got so... Well, hold on. That's a great argument, right? Mm. And I do sympathise with all those things. But how can I sympathise with the fact they've spent most of the parliamentary time tearing themselves apart? I so mean, you, you all that popcorn time... popcorn yesterday? Oh, God, that was hilarious. Popcorn. I know it's <laughs> con, but... It's, I, mean, why, I mean, that was delusional. I mean, Liz Truss had the keys of power. She was there. She was the prime minister. You know, the letters, as she's now known. Mm -hmm. And Kamikaze, the chancellor. I mean, destroyed the economy in 40 days. I mean, so how can they argue against that? How can they argue about all the time they've spent ripping themselves apart, except instead... I'm losing my words. Instead of concentrating on the economy and the country and the reason they were elected. They Let weren't ask... elected to spend that time ripping themselves apart. Let me ask you this on one major factor of this government, since it's been in power for the last 14 years. They delivered a Brexit that was voted on for by mm. a large proportion of this country. You voted for Brexit publicly that is listed. Did I? Did you? Well, interestingly enough, um, I did say I came down on that side at the last minute. Yeah. And I also qualified it, whether that's a right decision or wrong decision, I did make it absolutely clear and published it. I said, it will depend on the quality and the competence of our politicians seeing this through this transitional period. And if you ask me how I think they've done between one and ten, mm. I'd say it's a, a strong three. <laughs> so your useless line, although it was throwaway, has been backed up by numbers there. Uh, if you did vote for Brexit, do you regret doing so? Well, that's a difficult question. I do regret putting so much faith in people delivering mm -hmm. what they promised to deliver and them not sticking to the reasons why we decided to um, leave the EU. And at the moment, if we look at the last God knows how many months where we spent so much time talking about uh, repatriating 
up to possibly 500 illegal immigrants mm. instead of dealing with economic issues that we desperately need to deal with. We talk business rates. Business rates are destroying the high street. They're destroying retail. It's a tax from the 1500s. It's not fit for purpose. But they haven't found the energy to deal with it in the last God, 12, 13 years, never mind in the last parliament. It's something we've heard time and again on this show. We speak to people like Stasha Lord, the nightlife staff for the north of England, and he talks about business rates and the effect that's having on hospitality. I mean, retail at large as well. Look, this, this segment we like to call C-suite, where we speak okay. to uh, CEOs and okay. C-suite board men and get a bit of your sort of advice and your but large business career. You've come a very long way and you've had all these huge businesses. You employ a lot of I'm people. very old. Yeah, well, I wouldn't say that necessarily, but very successful. Look, in terms of your basic business advice. Despite everything you've been through and all the employees you oversee and everything else, when you're a dragon on the den, when you see people come in, what is your piece of advice to succeed in business? Look, entrepreneurs will do business and start businesses in any economic climate. Mm. The advice is no different. Just make sure you understand the upside and the downside. Make sure you've got enough cash for the good times and the bad times. Because, listen, you can live without profit for years and years and years and years and years, as long as you've got cash flow. Mm. If you haven't got cash flow, that means paying the bills at the end of the month, paying your staff, paying your rent. It's like a heart attack. Mm. You're dead. So don't bet the farm. Make sure you've got enough cash. And by all means, follow that passion. Nice. I mean, always have some running away money, <laughs> personally and Walk professionally. in the street money, not <laughs> running away. Walk, Walk in the in street money. money. Look, uh, what would your employees say of you, do you think, as the type of boss you are? I'd like to think they'd, they'd say I'm approachable and I, we use first name terms whenever we do in our business. It doesn't matter who you are. It's a family business. We don't, we don't no outside shareholders. Um, and I think they'll say I'm hands on. I know my business. I talk to people. Um, fair, but these are all things that we like to think of ourselves. Mm. Do I have my moments? Absolutely. Any entrepreneur will have his moments. Um, but I think they'll sound fair. And I, Ryman, I've owned for, you know, nearly 30 years. Robert Dars for 15 years. You know, it's, it's been a long... It, it, I've had businesses for a long time. Rob, Ryman's, uh, Robert Dars a bit less than that, actually. But Ryman's 130 years old. Mm. Robert Dars is 150 years old. So those businesses have been in the high street for all that period of time and have survived through wars, never mind through parliaments and uh, the Tory party ripping themselves apart. <laughs> Theo Fetus, look, it's been great talking to you. We'd love to have you come back in again, getting some business advice and why you think the government are so useless at the moment. Hopefully things will change. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We live in hope.